there's an interesting person I'd like to bring up, just as an example, uh, Bill Gates. Yeah. So he gets a very large amount of hate on the internet. Yeah. And there's something about him, this is me talking, not you, that, that he seems out of touch about that hate. He, I I believe, at least in my understanding, that he, uh, with, the, with the resources he has, he's trying and is actually doing a lot of good. And yet there's a gigantic amount of hate, conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Right. And it feels like that's the case because he's somehow out of touch with with people. So I wonder how you stay in touch with the voice of the people without being destroyed by the outrage. Is there mm -hmm. is there any wisdom you have to that? Or, or? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about wisdom, but I've thought about this too, because yeah, you wanna always be open to feedback, especially from people who have like your best interests at heart, right? And if you can become isolated from it and just like, you know, surrounded by yes people and um i mean who knows maybe maybe like she and putin and people like that are in situations i have no idea um but if you listen to too much of it and you just try to please everyone you'll never get anything done and i mean most of the best leaders are people who they can act when they believe that they they're doing something net positive for the world and humanity and they actually don't really care if they piss off some portion of the people almost anything you're going to do of significance in the world today is going to piss off 5% of people, maybe maybe 49% of people or whatever, maybe 60%. I don't know. So you never want to become so surrounded by people who just work for you and will say yes. And then you, you think like, well, I'm a genius and I'm like, I'm a, that's how you become a dictator or whatever. Um, but you also can't care so much about what people think because then you'll never do anything that's truly authentic to yourself. What, one other thought on that, by the way, I think it's a really good question. So I've thought about this a lot. Like why, you know, people generally kind of hate on Zuck and they hate on uh, Bill Gates and they hate on, um, they don't really hate on Elon. Well, actually, Elon has a lot of haters too, but it's a different well, thing. There's, this is measured. This is measured. I, I was okay. looking at some surveys. So I think uh, Zuck is the most, so loved and hated, right? Yeah. Uh, Zuckerberg is the most both uh, loved and hated. He's yes. the most hated. And then I think it's Bill Gates and Elon is down there. I think it's like 40% uh, hate Zuck, people asked. And then Elon is in the double digits, but low double digits. And so yeah. it's interesting. You, you just look at this data and ask yourself why. Right. So I, I ask myself this sometimes too, because I, I don't claim to know any of these people well, but like I've I've met them briefly. And I my impression is that they're actually all smart people trying to do good things in the world. So there's not too much difference there despite public perception. So why is it that some are really hated and some aren't? I mean, it's a complicated question. Um, obviously, you know, Zuck and his Facebook got blamed for the whole election thing and all that didn't help. Um, social media has gotten a lot of pressure just from like, you know, hey, why aren't you solving all of society's tough problems? It's like, well, they're just one company. But one thing I've noticed is that, you know, a lot of these people, they're a little, they have like Asperger's, right? A little bit. And um, sometimes, you know, p people with Asperger's don't really emote in the same way. And so I think it's almost a form of like, um, um, like bias against, um, their cognitive type or something, mm -hmm. which is like, it, that person doesn't emote right. I, I don't trust their, in, their, um, intentions. And, um, the other thing I've thought about too, is that sometimes I think some leaders, you know, um, like maybe Zuck or Bill Gates, they can come across as like a little bit PR rehearsed. Like they're basically, um, they're giving the PR approved answers as yeah. where Elon just says whatever he thinks, like to a fault. So even if people hate what he says, they're like, at least I believe it's authentic. Yeah. So I've always thought about that too for myself. I'm like, how do I, because you can, you can fuck it up on both sides, right? Like if you just come out and you're like saying whatever's stream of consciousness, you'll often end up like pissing off people on your team or yes. like saying, tripping over some like regulation that you, you know, um, there's all kinds of things about running a public company, you know, you can't say certain stuff. But if you're too PR approved in your answer is like, nobody trusts you what you're saying. And so anyway, this is something I think about a lot. I don't think I have the right answer, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to find that yeah, balance. And more and more with the internet, there's a premium on authenticity, just like you're saying. Yeah. People really, really appreciate that. So for leaders, it's a, it's a challenge to be, how do I, uh, make sure I'm authentic, but also 
Um, don't say stupid shit. <laughs> yeah. And so that's an interesting thing. I've noticed that um, just having interacted with a, with a bunch of leaders that you have to be careful how much you surround yourself with PR folks. Because mm -hmm. the best, I would say, let me just say a nice thing about marketing and PR folks, the best marketing folks are extremely good. Yeah. So they understand exactly what great marketing is and great, great PR. It's authenticity. It's showing, revealing the beauty. As opposed to uh, PR and marketing out of fear. Oh, don't say that. Don't say this. Don't right. that. Because then you you start living in this kind of, that pushes you towards a bubble where you can't express the we your your beautiful quirks and weirdness and all that kind of stuff. And also <clears throat> the cool, the beautiful things about what you're doing. I find like, um, especially with the tech thing, like even like Coinbase, the way to reveal the beauty of it is not only by showing all the things you could do with it, but showing that there's great engineering going on underneath. So letting the nerds shine too. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be like uh, these kind of commercials where it's like, uh, a happy family using uh, Coinbase to send a transaction about uh, flowers for mom or something like that. Like it could be also like gritty stuff and real stuff. 